My gosh, we got a kind of a misty day, Paul, but uh, we could use a little sunshine. But we just hope that uh, it's going to work out all right down here. You might wonder what we're doing up here today. It's kind of an overcast day, misty day, but it is springtime and there is a delicious mushroom out up here in northern Michigan. It's called morel. And with me is Paul Pasternak. He's been picking mushrooms for how many years, Paul? 15 or 20. 15 or 20. And he knows the morels and he knows which is the good mushrooms from the bad mushrooms. And we're gonna get some uh, good mushrooms, the morels, and uh, he's gonna take us back then to the house and he's gonna show us how to fix these delicious morsels. So let's uh, go into the mushroom, let's see if we can find some of these mushrooms right now. It can be very difficult because of the leaf coverage and uh, they blend in so well. Paul, how, Paul, do you have a certain way that you identify that you really look for when looking for a morel? No, not really. Just a good sharp eye is what you got to have. Uh, and once you find one, if you just move around that first one you find, there's going to be more. Is there, uh, there's usually more that come in, oh, like yes. in clumps. Oh, yes. Okay. It's, it's rare that you will find just a lone soldier out here. Uh -huh. uh, usually if you walk into a circle and keep going around, you're going to find more. Is when you find them, is there a certain tree? Do they uh, kind of grow in a certain area? I generally, that is... I generally look in, in a mixture of popple and hardwood, uh, maple. Uh, that's usually where I go into. Anything that's got a lot of popple and a lot of maple. Okay. All right, let's, let's look some more here. There we go. These, all right, now this is what the morale is right here. That's the good one. That's the good one. Now, what do you call these? Are these the white morels? These are the dark morels, or the black morels. Oh, the morels. dark morels. The white ones are not till the end of this month, the end of May. After the blacks, then comes the whites. Oh, I have to, okay. Uh -huh. there Which is, is it? supposed to be the bitter? I mean, as I, far as eating. I like these here. I, I've had a few of the whites. Uh, they're both good, but I prefer the blacks. Uh-huh. Boy, they sure do disguise. You, you sure really have to look oh, good for them. Oh, little buggers. Well, where's the other ones at right here? We just, yeah, we just spotted. There's another one. Okay, look how well they're camouflaged here. I mean, you, you really have to have a, really have to have a keen eye for them. And I always nip it off and leave the root in the ground. Uh huh. Here's one here. But you pick it right, not just off. You, you leave the, the root in the ground the there. Root in the ground, and I just nip it off. Uh -huh. That way, it'll come back up. Well, they or... say that if you leave the root in, that uh, the following year, that seed for the next uh -huh. year, I guess, is the old saying. And you spotted uh -huh. another one over here. Well, right here. Okay, here's one over here. All right, let's see that right here. So look how well these look. You really have to have an eye for that. Oh, yes. And these are really delicious. These, these babies right here are absolutely excellent by themselves, uh, fried up or with steak and... Oh. Uh, whatever the imagination can come yeah. up with when you go to cook. Now, what you do with these also, Paul, is you uh, dry them. I dry them for the winter months. Uh, they're a nice tasty morsel in December, January, and February, March. Uh, and uh, what they are is dehydrated and you just throw them into boiling water and they come right back just uh, like the day you picked them. And then again, you put them on your steak or into your soup or wow. stew or whatever. Wow. They dehydrate. And they're good for how long? Uh, I've had them for as long as a year and a half and two years, and they're just as good at the end of two years as they were the day we picked them. My. Now, uh, there is a difference between these, and there is a, another one that looks similar to this that is... There is a false morel, and uh, it, the characteristic of the false morel are quite similar to these, except the false morel, the stem comes up to the thick part here. On the false morel, the stem goes all the way up like an umbrella, and the cap just sets on top of the stem. Oh. The stem on these are hollow. Uh -huh. On the false morel, the stem is full. It's, it has a white uh, composition of some uh -huh. kind, snow white, and the stem is full completely, uh -huh. where these are hollow. What's really nice about uh, the morel picking, it's a, a really a beautiful time of the year. Oh, yes. Everything is starting to bud out. The right. Dogwood and uh, the violets and all the rest of this stuff. So it's a good time for really the kids, uh, the family to get out and come up here and uh, we're out in the woods uh, and pick these right. tasty Absolutely. morsels. But if a person wants to come up here, up here in a mile area, Boyne City has a mushroom uh, festival, uh, 
and I believe Lewiston, but up here in a mile area, why... Uh, we don't have festivals, but we got mushrooms. Well, he's got, mu got plenty of mushrooms. So let's uh, go back to the kitchen, Paul, and okay. see uh, how up. you prepare these up. Okay. You cut them in two, then you, you soak them, them overnight or something? No, or? I put them into boiling water for about three minutes, kind of pre-cook them. Mm -hmm. And then I finish cooking in a frying pan with the onions and uh, a little salt and pepper, a little parsley flake, and then put my eggs in there, and that's a feast fit for a king right oh, there. Oh, boy. Well, this is the first time that I've tried this, this morale with scrambled eggs, so. Excellent. The only way I've ever had morales before was a steak or eaten by itself. Oh. Mmm. Isn't that good? That's great. These deep right fried here. are deep fried. Delicious. Like eating peanuts, you can't stop. Mmm. Paul's not going to give out his hideaway where he's got getting these babies at. I'll but, make you a sample, though. But he'll sure make you a sample. <laughs> Paul, thanks again for being on Michigan Magazine. Thank you. Oh, delicious. Mmm.